Hi everyone, welcome to my new video. In this video, we will learn some JavaScript debugging tricks using the console object. Let's get started. Now, the simplest way to debug is by using console.log. Most people, including myself, do this regularly to check what's going on in our code. But there are better ways we might not be aware of which can help us improve our debugging skills. Let's explore them and start debugging like a professional. When we code in JavaScript, we can use the console object to provide access to a web browser's debugging console. But using our browser's debugging console is only possible when we code client-side JavaScript. This means our JS code is executed by the web browser. We can't do this using the example, using for example, Node.js, since this is executed on our server. The main advantage of the console object is that it works with all browsers, libraries and frameworks. Usage may vary from browser to browser, but there are some standard features that are typically provided. Now, let's start with this with a simple example. For this, we are going to use Chrome, but you can use any browser you like. So, this is our Chrome browser, and this is my YouTube channel, Shut Off Code. If you haven't subscribed, please do that now. Now, let's open, if you right click here, here we have Inspect. When you click it, you will see our console. Normally, I use it independent. Uh, not attached to the bottom or to the right side because I use two screens so on one screen I have the um, console and on the other screen I have the browser or my code. Now let's move to console and here you see a lot of errors which and warnings um, which are written by the uh, youtube.com page. Now let's clean them. Now we will write our code right directly inside the console and we will learn more about the console object. Now let's start with the easy one, console.log. We will write a function, let's call it debug me and it will take a parameter message and Inside we have console.log message, it will write this and let's say debug, we, will go, we are going to call the function and let's say hello world. Now I will hit enter and here we see that the output is hello world. This is the most simplest usage of console, most probably even you are using it all around your code to debug some certain code blocks. But very few developers continue other methods or are even aware of other usages. Even myself, I used only this for a long time until I really saw that also other methods are very powerful. So now we are going to look at console.count. What if we want to know how many times we have called the debug me function? There's an easy way to find that out. It's called console.count. Let's update our code and check it out. So I will copy and paste the same code here, but I will make a modification. Console.count um, without a parameter and let's say hello world hello uh, YouTube and hello um, what's Udemy I hit enter and we can see we called it three times hello world default one this is printed by console.count. It starts counting. Hello YouTube to Hello Udemy 3. 
this says that this function has been called three times. Count outputs the number of times it has been called. If there are no arguments, count behaves as if there is a default label and increments the count every time it is called. But what if we want to learn how many times the count function has been called with the same arguments? If we pass in the name as argument, the count function will count each call separately. Now let's check this out. So I will co copy this again. I will delete this one. And here I will say message. Now it has a label, a um, parameter. And here I will say, let's call this um, two times. And let's call this three times. I will go in, I'm going to hit enter. And here I see hello world one, hello world two, hello YouTube one, hello Udemy one, two, three. As you see, the function console.count tracks how many times we call the function with each name. Now let's have a look at um, console.warn. The warn method outputs a warning message to the console. It's useful when working with developer tools or APIs. Console.warn is ideal for letting users now something might not be correct, such as omitting an argument or letting the, loop, the loopers know the API version is depreciated. So let's think about a function. Function check token. We are going to check if a token is expired or not. If expired, here yeah, this is the parameter we are going to pass in and we will write console.warn token is expired this is a warning to the developer or to the person who is calling it okay now check token we are going to call the function and we pass in true. Hit enter and here we see the warning. Token is expired. This function checks whether a token is expired or not. If the token is expired, warn method locks a warning message prompting the developer to consider something. Very similar to this is the console.info and console.error methods. As the names state, one of them prints an info and the other one prints an error to the console. Now let's check out a more interesting method. Console.table If we are working with arrays or objects, the console.table method is very useful to display the data in a user-friendly way. Each element in the array will be displayed as a separate row. Let's create a sample array and check our console. Let countries, let's call it India. So I wrote this uh, before. Here it remembered it, that's nice. UK and let's say Germany and console.table countries and this might give an error no great okay because I used it before I used it before sometimes it says that it has been declared before and it doesn't um, let me use the same variable but <clears throat> now we have our sample table. You can see the table in the console. This method becomes handy once we are working with large arrays. This makes it easier to check the content of an array in a more user-friendly way. Working with arrays is simpler than working with objects. 
objects consist of value key pairs. Let's check how our table method will display objects. Let's say const cars. As you see, we have I have used this before. Brand, oops, no brand. Tesla and the model is Roadster. Console dot table cars. Here you see, here we have the key brand and model, and here we have the values Tesla and Roadster. If you want we can lock multiple objects in one call, passing objects as parameters and display them in the same table. So let's do this again. Now let's copy and paste this. It's going to be easier. And const phones. This also has some brand Apple model iPhone let's add one more colors black console dot table now we are since we are going to lock two objects we are going to use this in array we will take cars phones oops somewhere I made a mistake okay I saw it here yeah as I cost set okay now here we have the key zero this is the first sorry this is the first uh, row this is the second row then we have the brand Tesla and since the where's our brand Apple oh I wrote brand okay let's fix this brand to the D yeah okay sorry for this okay oh no it's again brand ah brand brand Okay, we are logging to the old ones. Okay, now we have it. No, we don't. Let's make this three. Three. Cars. Three. Three. Okay, so very sorry for this. But as you can see, even if you write something in the console, it stores this in memory. And if you're going to, um, if you if you try to define it again, it throws an error. Now we have brand Tesla Apple model Roadster iPhone and the color black. This is empty because we don't have any color for this. So it groups these, and if they are single, then we have uh, a column for this key, uh, but it's empty for the other object. Okay. Now let's group objects in a single table. Console.group. When working with sets or linked data, use nested groups to help organize your output by visually associating related messages. To create a new nested block, call console.group. So let's see how this works. Console.lock. Here we say start. This is the start of our um, let's say logging chain. Then we will say console dot group and continue. Now we will now what this is going to do is it's going to group the next uh, consoles. Let's say group one console lock you know group now we create a new group 
console.log. This is the group two. So as you can see here, this is the first group. This is the second group. Now we will add one more console log to the group two. Console.log. Um, let's say we are going to close this one. This is going to close this group. Console.log group one. And finally, console dot um, group end. We have closed group one, and let's say console dot lock end. Now let's hit enter. So we start here. We have our first group, group one. Here we have our second group, as you can see. Here we have the first group, then we have here another group. Inside this group we have group 1 console logs. Inside this group we have group 2 console logs and then we are ending it uh, by closing these right here. So the following code displays nested block level console statements. Useful when working with relation based data. That's it. For more info um, on the console object and implementation you can check out let me show you this web page w3 schools object console here you have all the different methods and explanations and I think if you click on them you have it for now if you enjoyed, please like the video and if you want more tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on new videos. See you soon.